What is, what is the workflow here with all this gear? It's set up sort of, the rack's over there right now because I'm in Atmos mode. Um, mm -hmm. It pulls up during a tracking session, so it's right here next to me. I can access everything. So most everything in there is mic pre's and compressors I use for tracking um, on tracking days with full band. Um, my little room has 32 inputs, so I can get quite a bit of stuff happening all at once. Um, everything you see here is kind of designed for mixing workflow. So I still do a hybrid mix process with mm -hmm. outboard gear. Um, and I, I don't do summing with outboard gear. I do summing internally, but I use these as inserts. And okay. it's very simple. I have the Shadow Hills compressor. I think it's serial number 30. Wow. I got one amazing deal on it several years ago. Somebody had bought it from McBride over at Blackbird. Apparently they didn't want it or whatever. They traded it in. A guy at GC Pro that I was friends with said, hey, any chance you'd want to buy a Shadow Hills mastering compressor? And I said, what do you want for it? And he told me and I scarfed it up and you don't want to know what I paid for that because it was a steal. Oh, wow. And uh, so I got that. And so that almost exclusively lives on the two bus when I'm mixing stereo. That's great. Along with this Great River EQ. Um, those two kind of hang there. Um, and then this API right here sits on the band most of the time. And that's kind of my standard, almost go to every mix when I start. Now it can get changed out, but that's it. So those are the three things I'm reaching for other than faders and plugs during a mix. I have two distressors down here by my feet. Uh, I haven't changed the settings on those in 20 years. Um, they, all right, let's just get those settings yeah. for a <laughs> you, can, you can take them. Um, but they, I use them on snare drum. So top, top one is for snare thwack. Bottom one's for snare uh, body. Wow. And that's what I use them for. And uh, try it out. Try those settings. You'll be surprised. And then I, I blend those with the, the uncompressed snare top and bottom mics. And that's kind of where I get the extra beef out of the snare. It's, something I've been doing for a long time. Interesting. Yeah. Obviously you're in Atmos, you've got the S1 thing. Yeah. Are you rocking an Avid interface? Yeah, so interface wise, I've got two HDIOs and a matrix. So they sit over here in this ISO cab. Let me open that up. So nice. these guys and then this guy. So this guy's pretty much, other than some AES, it's doing all the Dante work okay. of the room. And then these guys are all my analog IO. So I've got 32 in and out here. Um, and then they're clocked to this atomic clock up here from Antelope and then the, the Trinity. And what's great about this box, having an external clock like this is I can do three different units at three different clocks, but it syncs them all together along with this trend off. So the Atmos rig um, itself runs off of this trend off. It's a 16 channel box. Wow. So every speaker in here, including, you haven't seen the JL Audio subs back here either. I don't no, think. so you've got two subs back yeah. there. So I have um, one on each side of the room. They're Fathom, uh, JL Audio Fathom 113s. So the trend off is handling all of the heavy lifting. So that's crazy. And I think a lot more people are hip to the trend off now. Yeah. I've, I've been using ST2 for well, I had one of the very first ST2s they made before they had the Pro or any of this stuff. It was a gray box. And um, uh, I had been reaching out to Trinoff years ago about their consumer system saying, please, please make a professional rig that we can do what you're doing in home movie theaters because I think it's gonna be awesome. I used to go into every tracking room and I would take in some Lake Mesa EQs and a laptop and I would spend four or five hours and my assistant and I would laser align the speakers and I would tune the room to my control room back at my studio. And every room in town I had mapped out and I had on the laptop, I could recall the settings wow. and pull it up in any room I was in. But what I couldn't do was manipulate the phase. I could only change the uh. EQ. So when these guys figured that out, yeah. it was like, whoa, come yeah. on. And at first, a lot of guys were like, well, it's, it, it's got latency. You can't listen in the control room, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, well, just bypass it. If you're trying to track, yeah. just bypass it. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, and then pop it back in when you need to get a sound or you need to listen real quick. It's it's really simple. It's one button. It makes all the difference in the world. And Soren and all the guys at Turn Off have been so good to me. And this actually started out as I think a 12 channel unit. We bumped it up to 16 when I went to 914. I could show you the graphs on the screen what it's done to this room, but um, the room was already incredible. And then what it did is over the top. So. Yeah, I've been thinking about getting a trend off for my room. I'm like the biggest disciple of trend offs that there is. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I've been talking it up for years. You know, I'd re be remiss not to talk about what has become one of my favorite mic pre's in the world. And sure, it's yeah, these, please. These guys, and I'm not sponsored. I've had, I've had to buy every one of these. Brett Teagarden, who makes these, Teagarden Audio, he, uh, when I first came to town, I interned with him. And he was a session engineer here in town. And um, he started this company several years ago. And he called me when he was building these in the beginning. And these are the older models. You can tell the face on the one under here is different. It's a newer version. But he called me and we were over to Ocean Way A tracking one day. And I used to have a rack of 1081s that I used on drums, okay? Yeah. Still one of my favorites. Of course. And I was in Ocean Way A with my 1081s and their 31115 console, right? So I've yeah. got, I've got 10 million of these things at my, and so I had, the, that day the drummer was Tommy Harden. I had Tommy come in an hour early and we had it set up where we could patch over to these really fast. And I ran 16 channels of T-Garden Audio and, and you know, took out pre, uh, EQ settings yep. and did the exact same chain that I would do. And then we AB'd and I ended up tracking that day with the T-Gardens and, and it was the same kind of revelation I had, which I didn't tell you my clock story, but I didn't want to buy that clock. Of course. I didn't want to spend the money. Nobody wants to. It's not sexy. Yeah. There's nothing fun about a clock. There's nothing fun about computers. I, yeah. I fought buying a computer for years because I'm like, it just feels like a waste of money. It's not, but it, it doesn't make things sound better, yeah. right? And I'm like, a clock can't make, well, so I was like, I'm not gonna like these things. I, I'm, I'm using Neves, man. Yeah. And, and then I went, holy cow, these things sound great. Like, I got a lot of money tied up in these 1081s. Uh -huh. So I bought 16 channels and wow. I moved over to it. And that's, I mean, I use them on drums all the time now, whether I'm here or at another studio, it's, yeah. it's they they get a lot of use. So it's, that's a huge shout out to his products. And I have his, I got his Fat Boy Tube DIs. I've got three channels of that. There's a rack mount and I have another one. Um, for the bass player when he comes in and um, his microphones on the drums. He's, he's, they do great stuff. He really needs to endorse me now, but, yeah, uh, yeah. or I need to endorse him and I don't know. Anyway. What's his name? Brett Teagarden. Brett? You need to meet Brett. He's yeah, come on, Brett. Great guy. Endorse <laughs> Matt. How are you doing?